Okay, so the trap bar deadlift, um, in case you've never seen one before, this hexagon shaped bar here, it's called trap bar. Depending on the brand that your gym has or that you bought, um, it may or may not have two different handles. So this one has a handle up here that sets up about four inches above where a normal, bar, normal barbell would be. <clears throat> if you wanted a more range of motion, you're able to get a little bit deeper. We could actually take this and flip it over to where we gotta get a little bit deeper down to the handles. For anybody who's just starting with the trap bar, I prefer to have them start with the high handle, but this is not any different than a kettlebell deadlift. It's just a different apparatus. So the pins coming off the side, we want to get our feet up there right in the middle between them so we're not at the back of the bar. So we don't want to be feet at the back reaching forward. We're going to walk the feet up in the middle, hinge the hips back, we're going to bend the knees just enough to get down, squeeze the armpits, drive through the hips, stand up tall, push the hips back, return to the floor. So. One of the things that you might see people do, or that people commonly do, is they do this trap bar deadlift and they get super wide with their feet. <clears throat> what ends up happening there is that when we go to grab the handles and go to actually pull, those knees buckle in to get out of the way. And that screws up all of our mechanics. It doesn't let us use the hips or anything that we need to. Um, and it makes us pipe all that force right through the knees. So, Bring your feet in some. We don't need to be super narrow, but we want to be no wider that we can kind of keep the feet or the knees over the feet when we come down to the bottom. And that might mean your knees are pushing against your elbows, your forearms. As you come down, that's fine. But if we get too wide, we get buckled in. So bring those feet in some. Drive through. 